Yo guys, what's up? It's Bio here and today we'll be building a chord step patch using Maelstrom and a couple of Reason 5 devices so this patch is fully Reason 5 compatible. I've got a quick example prepared right here to show you guys what this patch will sound like when it's finished. Alright, let's get to rebuilding the patch. First up, you want to create a line mixer 6 to 2. And I'll explain why we need this mixer in just a second. But before that, we'll create our Maelstrom unit. And on the Maelstrom, we'll leave the first oscillator as a sine wave, but we'll bring up the octave to octave 6, and we'll bring the volume down to about 55. Next up, we'll activate oscillator B, and we'll select the wave PWM, pulse width modulation uh, wavetable. And on this wavetable, we'll bring up the motion to about 32, and we'll set the octave at octave 5. Next up, we'll route the oscillator B through the filter B by checking this little box right here, but we'll deactivate filter B and only route the signal further on into the shaper and then into the filter A. And we'll also activate this little checkbox right here on oscillator A. So oscillator A gets also routed through the shaper, which will leave deactivated right into filter A. On filter A, we'll bring the frequency all the way down and then we'll bring the amount all the way up on the filter envelope where we'll bring the sustain all the way down and the decay down to about 43 and we can also bring up the release a bit. Oh, which reminds me that I forgot to bring down the sustain all the way on the amp envelope on oscillator A and also on oscillator B and bring up the release a bit to about 60 on both. So we have our nice kind of plucky style sound. Of course, you can then go on to uh, changing the decay value on the filter envelope and to change the way this sounds and to tailor it to your needs. In the example that I've just shown you, I automated the filter envelope amount, so we have this nice kind of upward curve uh, on the filter. Um, but you can adjust these envelope settings to your liking and your preference. What we'll do next is add some delay. Now, if you were using Reason 6 or 7, you could simply create an echo unit, because it has this very nice ducking knob down here, which you would then bring all the way up. But because we want this tutorial to be compatible with Reason 5 and this patch as well, we'll be using the standard uh, Reason 5 delay, but what we'll do is we'll right click the mixer and create it there as a send effect. So go to Studio Effects and create your digital delay line while right clicking the mixer and it'll auto hook up as a send effect to this mixer. On the uh, delay we can bring up the feedback a bit but that's pretty much all we're gonna do and then we'll bring up the aux value on the mixer a bit so we can actually hear our delay. And what we want to do now for our chord step section to be really uh, distinct and have a nice melody to it, we want to sidechain the delayed signal to the actual dry signal so we can still hear our steps as they come along. I'm going to demonstrate this now using the example patch where this is already set up. And um, I'm just going to give you an A-B comparison of how this sounds without the sidechain compression, compression on the delay line and with it. So first up, without. So this is pure delay running on the step. And you can hear we have our nice delay sound, but the whole thing gets kind of indistinct and washy and you can't really make out which are the notes and which are the delayed notes anymore. And you can change that by compressing or sidechain compressing the delayed signal. And now listen what we got when I turn on the compressor. This way we can only hear the delayed signal when the actual dry signal is not playing. And this is a really nice way to give some distinction to your step, chord lines and this kind of stuff. So how do you build this crap? 
well, first up, you want to right click the delay line or pretty much anywhere and create an audio merger and splitter next to it. Then you once again right click on your delay unit and you create a compressor. Just gonna pull this here. If we now flip the rack around, we can see that our uh, mixer strip sends the send effect to the delay line. The delay, li the delay line goes into the compressor and the compressor goes back to the return. What we want to do now is take the dry signal that's coming right out of the maelstrom into the splitter. One uh, split signal will take back into the mixer and the other one will route into the side chain in on our compressor. So the dry signal is compressing the digital delay line uh, signal. That is the aux and send return on our mixer. But we still need to do some uh, changes on our compressor. So first up we'll bring the ratio all the way up and the threshold all the way down. So we really have quite the uh, extreme compression going. And then I'll also bring the attack down all the way and leave the release where it is. So let's hear what we got. Oh crap, still soloed. There you go. Now as you can see the delayed signal gets sidechained from the uh, original dry signal. If we want to make this effect even more extreme we can give some more release to the compressor. Or if we want to tone it down a bit we could bring the release down again. So this technique just helps to get some distinction in your uh, in your chord step line so you can actually hear the MIDI notes and uh, make a distinction between the delayed signal and the actual dry signal. Next up I'm gonna right click the mixer to create an effect that um, that is routed right off the main out of the mixer so it affects the whole signal, the dry one and the delayed one. And this effect is going to be a reverb unit and I'll select the film score preset and bring down the dry wet a bit and what I'll also do is open up the programmer and bring down the pre-delay to zero so the, the reverb kicks uh, in right after the actual stab comes through and I'll also bring up the damp a bit so uh, the whole reverb sounds a little um, well damper and warmer and not quite as sharp Alright, so um, next up we'll run it through an equalizer to get rid of some annoying frequencies. So I'll just uh, duck in a hole, dig in a hole at 800 hertz uh, with the Q at somewhere about 4. And then I'll use parameter 2 to uh, make another hole at about 6 kilohertz. This one is a little bit sharper. This makes it sound a little thinner, but um, if I apply the uh, Scream 4 tape distortion now, it's uh, it's essential that we have these frequencies cut, because I'm going to show you now the A-B comparison. If I bring the, uh, the speed all the way up on the compressor and the damage down just a bit, if we were to uh, deactivate the equalizer, you can hear that it sounds really distorted and not quite as uh, beautiful and powerful. Um, as it sounds when we remove these frequencies and, done, and then run it through the tape distortion. And I've got it on tube because I can't read apparently. Make sure it's on tape and not on tube. Sweet! Um, last but not least we can apply yet another compressor to the signal. And uh, this compressor um, I'll just have it to put a focus on the first transient and also to make the delayed signal that comes after this step come out a bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the ratio up just a bit to about 10 to 1 and we can bring the threshold down quite a bit to minus 30 dB. Then I'll reduce the attack a bit to about 25 milliseconds and I'll go all the way down on the release. So if we now um, make these settings even more extreme, we can hear a real pop coming through on, these, uh, on this initial attack.
it just tightens the signal up a bit. And there you have it. That's all there is to uh, these, this patch in the rack. Now, as I said, what I did in the example was just alt-click on the filter envelope amount to get an automation line in the mixer, uh, in the sequencer, sorry. And then I just automated the amp envelope to go up steadily and the notes are just some basic steps, nothing uh, too complicated and always on the last step I moved this uh, lowest note up a bit to get this nice variation going. Yeah, and there you have it. What I forgot to say and which is uh, and what is also a good idea is just to bring up the high uh, cut a bit. So if you turn on the cut on the screen 4 you can boost the highs a bit to give it some more air and then uh, just a brighter feel. Alright, this is it from me, have a good one guys and I'll see you next weekend.